Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here with your weekly delivery of Rust development correspondence, where today a certain key feature was added. But first, because a lot of people clearly switch off before I say so at the end of the vid, come and join me on Twitch, where I stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Link down below. Anyway, as I mentioned last week, cars are on the main staging branch now, and we're expecting them to be fully merged into the release branch, that's the one most of you play on normally, in the next forced wipe on the 2nd of July. The good news this week is that we can now attach locks to our cars to prevent vehicle theft and help lower the insurance. These have to be put on with a vehicle ramp, cost 75 francs a pop, and come with a free key. You can create extra keys for your team via the ramp for 15 francs each, but not men's shoes, sadly, and you can also remove a vehicle's lock with it, and that's any vehicle's lock, regardless of whether you have the key. So, technically, if you could push someone else's car all the way across the island and onto your ramp, you could take ownership of it. Although, note that at the moment you don't get anything back for removing one. Not sure if that'll change, though. But wait, there are alternative methods. It's also possible to remove a lock from a vehicle manually in the field if you can get the cockpit module down to 15% health. Or you could just ask the owner nicely for the key with a rock. Each lock has its own unique five-digit ID, and only keys with the same ID can be used with them, so not much chance of someone producing a forgery. Interestingly, keys also act like notes now, so you can add a description to identify each one. As an added bonus, this feature will also apply to normal door keys if you use them, that is. And I'm thinking it would be nice to be able to attach notes to all sorts of things, wouldn't it? I imagine this could really help with long-distance communication, for instance. Or maybe... Message for you, sir. Perhaps even put your own stamp on a crafting item. Let me know in the comments what you'd add notes to if you could. Anyway, I digress. Getting back to locks, they're not outwardly visible at the moment, sadly. I'm hoping that'll change. But in the meantime, you'll just have to approach a car and eyeball the fuel tank or something to know whether it has an owner. Please note, although you can still get into a car and even sit in the driver's seat without a key, unlike base door locks, you'll need the correct one somewhere in your inventory to drive access storage modules, the engine and fuel tank. And because I'm psychic and know what you're going to ask, no, there are no plans for code lock versions. I mean, do you have a code lock on your salvaged car in real life? Didn't think so. If you only remember one thing this week though, just remember that all of this is subject to change. And we still have a couple of weeks, so it probably will. Oh yes, and did you know cars are apparently the perfect size to fit down the Happis tunnels? Mm. Earlier this month, I showed you some of the new animal art that's being worked on to spruce up our furry frenemies, such as Bungle the Bear and oh, Two Socks here. Well, into that mix, you can now add the monarch of the Glen himself, Mr. Stag. Again, like the others, he's so fluffy. Still, no word on when we're likely to see these furry halfwits moving around in-game, as it's not just about new textures and models, but animations and AI as well. But I'll keep you up to date on this as I get more info. In other news this week, triangle grills and ladder hatches received a fix for damage not being applied when they were hit on their edges, and there were a few new convars added this week that server owners and those into cinematics might be interested in, such as a couple that expand what we can do with keybinds, and a couple of car-specific ones, most notably cars drop loot, which if set to false, will stop cars from dropping storage items on death. And I'll stick the full details of these in the description for you. Also, as mentioned previously, it seems the bandit camp is getting an upgrade soon. According to the commits, it looks like not only will there be a helipad added, but also a new vendor that will be specializing in helis. And this, I'm sure, is all linked to the change soon. We'll see choppers become a harder thing to get your hands on. More news on this as I have it, so make sure you subscribe to the channel here for when I bring you that. Not only is this change coming to the bandit camp, but it could be that at the same time, some of the bandits will no longer have two arms. Remember these slot machines, whose models have been floating around in comms? Limbo. For far too long now. Well, over the last week, a lot more work seems to have been done on these, including setting up using scrap for credits and payouts. 
Now, if only they could make the poker tables functional as well, I'm sure there'd always be a full house down at the dredge. Still no news on console release or HDRP, but feel free to ask in the comments anyway. Regardless, please leave a like on this video if you appreciated it. Join me over on Twitch and stay up to date with all my content as soon as I hit publish over on Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. A big thank you to my amazing patrons for supporting my work here. All my links, as always, are down below. I shall catch you all soon. But in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Message for you, sir.